The Great Fire of London. A city consumed by flames. On September 2, 1666, as Londoners slept, an unremarkable spark in the house of the King's Baker ignited one of the most devastating disasters in the city's history. What began as a small fire in a bakery on Pudding Lane quickly turned into an inferno that raged for four days, consuming much of London and altering the city's landscape forever. It was a quiet Sunday morning when the fire first broke out. Thomas Fariner, the king's baker, had gone to bed, leaving the fire in his oven smoldering. In the early hours, those embers sparked into flames, catching the wooden structure of the bakery alight. Fariner and his family were able to escape by climbing through an upstairs window, but within minutes, the fire had spread to neighboring buildings. The narrow streets of London, packed with timber-framed houses, provided the perfect fuel for the flames. The fire quickly took hold, driven by strong winds that carried the embers across rooftops and into the densely packed heart of the city. The ancient streets of London, largely built of wood and thatch, were a tinderbox waiting for a spark, and now they burned uncontrollably. As the flames spread, residents tried desperately to save their homes, throwing buckets of water on the fire or tearing down buildings in an attempt to create firebreaks. But their efforts were in vain. The fire was too fierce, the wind too strong. By the morning of September 3, the fire had grown into an unstoppable force, devouring everything in its path. The city's wooden houses, shops, and warehouses, many filled with flammable goods like oil, pitch, and tar, fed the flames, creating an inferno that leapt from building to building. The fire spread rapidly towards the heart of London, threatening to consume some of the city's most iconic structures. Old Street, Paul's Cathedral, a massive Gothic edifice that had stood for centuries, became a tragic casualty of the fire. As the flames reached the cathedral, the lead roof melted, and the wooden interior was engulfed in flames. The intense heat caused the stone walls to crack and collapse, reducing the grand structure to ruins. The loss of St. Paul's was a symbolic blow to the city, a reminder of the fire's destructive power. As the fire raged, panic spread through the city. People fled their homes, carrying what few possessions they could salvage clogging the streets and the riverbanks with a mass of desperate humanity. The River Thames became a refuge, as residents took to boats in an attempt to escape the relentless advance of the flames. But even the river could not completely protect them, as sparks carried by the wind set fire to warehouses and buildings along the water's edge. London's authorities struggled to contain the chaos. Lord Mayor Thomas Bloodworth, initially dismissive of the fire's potential, quickly found himself overwhelmed by the scale of the disaster. In desperation, he appealed to King Charles II, who took charge of the efforts to control the fire. The king, along with his brother, the Duke of York, personally directed the creation of firebreaks, ordering the demolition of buildings to halt the spread of the flames. But even the drastic measures of using gunpowder to create gaps in the cityscape did little to slow the inferno. For four days, the fire burned, unchecked and unstoppable. The heat was so intense that it created its own weather system, with flames swirling in whirlwinds and sparks flying across the city. By the time the winds finally died down and the fire was brought under control on September 6, the damage was catastrophic. An estimated 13,000 houses had been destroyed, along with 87 parish churches, numerous public buildings, and countless businesses. The once thriving city of London was left a smoking ruin. The aftermath of the Great Fire was devastating. Thousands of Londoners were left homeless, their livelihoods destroyed. The city's infrastructure was in ruins, and the cost of rebuilding was immense. Yet, amid the destruction, the fire also created an opportunity for renewal. The old medieval city, with its narrow, winding streets and overcrowded buildings, was gone. In its place, a new London would rise, one designed with wider streets, brick and stone buildings, and improved sanitation. The task of rebuilding fell to a number of architects and planners, most notably Sir Christopher Wren, who would go on to design the new street. Paul's Cathedral, a symbol of London's resilience and rebirth.
The Great Fire also led to significant changes in building regulations, with laws introduced to prevent future fires on such a scale. Wooden buildings were largely replaced with brick and stone, and firefighting techniques were improved. The Great Fire of London remains one of the most significant events in the city's history. It was a disaster that destroyed much of the medieval city but also paved the way for the modern metropolis that London would become. The fire's legacy is still visible today in the city's architecture and urban planning, a testament to both the destructive power of fire and the enduring spirit of a city that rose from the ashes.